Later in this presentation, we'll look at some data from a tank test setup. But to set up this discussion, looking at graphs that contain readings of one parameter from multiple instruments can help establish acceptance criteria for measurement results. Once established, the tank test data should all fall within the acceptance criteria. Advanced users might use sophisticated statistical models to set up acceptance criteria, but simple pass-fail criteria work fine and are much easier to implement successfully. Seeing data that does not fit the acceptance criteria or are obviously erratic should trigger further action. Check to see everything with the sensor and setup looks normal and is performing properly. Consider recalibrating or performing the recommended maintenance routine. It may be that the sensor or setup needs some basic repair that can be done by the user. More advanced repairs will need to be done by a trained service person, possibly affiliated with the manufacturer. Remember that calibration only changes what the sensor reads and will not necessarily fix a problem with the sensor. Maintenance or repair, on the other hand, will change how the sensor measures. Here we have temperature data on the upper left hand corner uh, from 10 instruments that were in a laboratory tank over an 11 day period. The red squares are the QAQC readings from a NIST traceable mercury thermometer. We can see that nine of the 10 instruments appear to be working well with a nice tight data cluster. One instrument is clearly different from the rest. Further investigation of the instrument and system setup is required to understand the root cause of the deviation. In the lower right hand section of the slide, we have conductivity data from the same 10 instruments that were in a laboratory tank over an 11 day period. We see some variation from the group, not as tight as we would like. This may be an indication of sensor problems or poor maintenance. Here are dissolved oxygen data from the same lab tank test. QAQC is a paired Winkler titration for dissolved oxygen. There is some variation evidence within the group. Here you can ask yourself whether this variation is acceptable for your program. Something to investigate is the consistency of the Winklers. I don't know whether these data are from a Clark cell DO sensor or an optical sensor. The answer to this may provide clues for troubleshooting if if data are from a Clark cell, it may be an issue around maintenance, for example. In the lower right-hand section are pH data from the same lab tank test. Wild fluctuations in this parameter may be an indication of poor maintenance or sensor malfunction. This is the last si slide in the series of lab tank test data. By this point, the value of data should be getting clearer. It's a relatively simple and low-cost method to characterize equipment and help identify potential trouble areas. Moving on now, this next series of slides highlights QAQC data from a real-life field example. These charts contain data from a small watershed, small watershed in the Okanagan Valley in central British Columbia, Canada. Here there is a data song deployed by the bank of a stream set up for real-time data collection. And that's the photo in the lower right-hand corner of that data sound in its deployment state. This graph shows the temperature data. In this case, a NIST traceable mercury thermometer is brought to the field for QAQC measurements. Note the frequency of the checks and the relatively close agreement between the QAQC and the field measurement. From the same period of time and the same installation, here are the pH data. In this case, two QAQC methods were used. The black diamonds are from a golden sond that was used to check measurements in the field. The gray triangles are pH measurements taken from grab samples that were sent to a lab. Note how there is a consistent offset here, most likely due to sample degradation that occurred over the three to five day delay from the day the samples were collected to the time samples were finally analyzed at a lab. This reinforces a point made earlier of the importance of making QAQC measurements as close to the actual time and location of the primary measurement as possible.
Here now are specific conductance data. Like with the pH data, the black diamonds are from a golden sonde and the gray triangles are from grab samples sent to a lab. Note again the deviation of the lab samples from the field measurement. Here now are the dissolved oxygen data. QAQC was done with a golden sun only. We know the March 23rd data were compromised, but the point was left here just for demonstration purposes. History and experience allows for these judgment calls to be made confidently. Here now are the turbidity data, where golden sun and grab samples were used for QAQC. Note the lab turbidity data are consistently lower. This could be due to charged particle adhesion to the plastic sample bottles. So wrapping things up here, as the old adage goes, one gets out what one puts in. Today's water quality instrumentation is capable of producing high quality data for many applications. In the end, the level of commitment that water resource professionals devote to a QAQC program dictates the quality of data that is generated. To collect the most and best data possible, field staff must maintain equipment whenever required and take regular field samples to be used for quality checks. If, because of other commitments, instrumentation is only maintained on an occasional basis and only minimal field QC measurements are made, then lower quality and less accurate data must be accepted. Without a well-planned and executed QAQC program to verify measurements, water resource professionals in the office or in the field should not assume that water quality instrumentation is correct. So thanks for taking the time to listen. If you have additional questions or would like more information, feel free to contact us here at Hawk Hydromet. The technical support and service line is uh, for domestic folks or U.S. based folks, 1-800-949 three seven six six and select option two. Internationally call nine seven zero six six nine three zero five zero option two or feel free to send us an email at tech support at hawkhydromet.com. Thank you.